Hey guys, the video you're about to watch is sort of a continuation of some videos I did back in 2020 where I interviewed my friend Chris Espinall about some possibly paranormal experiences he may have had. I did another similar video in 2021 where a friend of mine told me about some of her experiences working in a funeral home. So in this video, Chris told me some more stories about things that he's seen or experienced in his house and in other places throughout the years, and later on we're joined by his father, Ray, who is a bit more of a skeptic than Chris is, but even he's claimed to have had some weird experiences that he can't fully explain. Now, I have no idea how true or untrue the things they tell me actually are, but I definitely believe they at least believe it. But whether you choose to believe or disbelieve this is totally up to you. Uh, and you told me a while ago that what you saw like a black face or something yeah um so what happened it was like a month ago like what happened was um i just randomly i don't know what i was doing at the time but i was just trying to go to my room and as i was going to my room you know i have that small hallway that's like that leads to the kitchen and everything the corner of my eye i could have sworn it was like a black it was like a black face like and a neck sticking out from the kitchen side and looking at me and i couldn't really um like I, it had like it was weird like i couldn't really tell by the features it was just it was just mat it was just dark it was black and um, when I turned to look at it, it wasn't there. You've told me about a lot of these, like, experiences you've had in your house, but you don't think it's the same thing? No, I don't. I don't, I don't feel like it's the same thing. When you saw this, like, uh, black face in your kitchen area, do you know if there was anybody else home with you? I mean, could it have possibly oh, yeah. been your uncle? No. No, it had no features. It was literally like a... It was literally like a, like a, like a, it, you know what it kind of looked like? It kind of looked like somebody was wearing a Halloween costume. Like, picture like a black sack on the face. Like, picture a Spider-Man costume, but it was fully black with no eyes and no nothing. Like, that type of thing. You know, it was like the whole, the, the face and neck was just... That was it. It had no features, nothing. And I turned to look and it wasn't there. I know you told me the story of you thought there was something in your room. And then even I remember you mentioning, didn't you say something like when you were younger, drawers used to open and close by themselves? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't get that anymore, actually. Mm. I, always, I used to get a weird feeling when I go to the basement sometimes. There'll be times where I'll go in the basement to chill with my brothers and then... I feel something weird by the boiler, like some type of weird vibe that I don't feel like going over there. You told me this story a lot, and I know your brothers apparently experienced this. Something about, uh, they were in the basement or something, yeah. and something was holding the basement door closed? Yeah, they, and they thought it was me. And, um, from my, it, that was crazy, that was crazy. From my perspective, I was just upstairs talking to... I was in a three-way conversation between my grandmother and my biological mother. And I just started randomly hearing screams and stuff. And it was the kids. And at the time, they were... At the time, they would lock the doors. It was just... I guess it was such a hassle for my mom to take... Like, to deal with the kids. She needed a break, so she locked them in the room. And I, this is the strangest thing, because the lock is on the outside. They can't open the door. They randomly ran upstairs, so I don't know how they even got out. The the oldest out of my younger brothers, he's the one that's kind of like tearing up, and he's, it was you, you did it. And 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 um, my youngest, my youngest brother, he was like. He he was he was okay. He wasn't really tearing up, but he was like kind of like on edge, but not too much. He it was like, hey Chris, you could tell me that was you that did. I'm like, I'm I'm trying to figure out what they're talking about. From their perspective, they said that they saw feet on the crack of the door, and somebody was shaking the door, 
and they were trying to op- they were the guy was trying to open the door because it opens from that s- the outside and they were trying to hold the door for dear life and then when they actually the door got opened somehow in between the tussle and they got free that's how they got free and that's when they ran upstairs and then they thought it was me my mom and and grandma they they vouched for me i was upstairs talking to them again my my brother's i don't know from his perspective but from my perspective it's them running upstairs and i'm like how did they get out and then he's pointing it was you and i'm like i'm and i'm like baffled i don't even know what he was talking about that was kind of weird they said they saw black feet or or boots or something on the crack of the door when they opened the door nobody was there i'm gonna give you a few more that i just recently experienced i'm starting to hear like noise of shit that's being touched that that i'm like you know what the fuck you know i i prior to that i didn't hear none of that shit now it's it's you know i'm hearing bottles being touched i'm i'm hearing like something brushing up against the bag that's that's hung near my my um near my bed you know what i mean i'm i'm hearing like like compression like wall pressing like somebody put a hand on a wall and was pressing against it i'm hearing that and i didn't prior to that i that shit wasn't really happening you know two three days before halloween that shit started happening and now it's happening pretty regular and it's annoying the shit out of me um another thing that i thought was pretty unique i don't know if it's you want to count it as scary or nothing but this one was pretty nice um maybe felt as you know i i lost my dog i don't know what it is but i started hearing and that's one thing i've been hearing too but i'm trying to tell myself it's my dog but i feel like this time it wasn't but the time i'm about to tell you i was sleep i'm i have been hearing like the wood because you know i have wood floor pressing like somebody stepping there as i'm sleeping in my room so i'm right now i roll in my eyes right now like i'm fucking kidding me as i was getting into a sleep like i was uh, as i was sleeping getting into a dream you know that state where you're getting where you're sliding into a dream and you're phasing in between awakefulness and just regular sleep and dreaming i started to see i'm starting to feel the vibe of like my dog and my dog would jump on my bed and i started to feel like something warm in my body and relentless amount of licking and this was like a dream state but i could have swear i swear to god like i was being bombarded on licks but in and out between that I started to hear these uh, The stepping of the wood Like somebody was stepping on my uh, Around my room Those are a few things that Lately I've been experiencing That dog My dog one was The nicest one I, I That one made me smile That one made me uh, More cheerful The other ones that I don't really Doesn't bother me that much The one thing that I will say It's I'm trying to decipher between this stepping, could it be my dog spirit or some shit like that, or is it something else? Sometimes I feel like it doesn't feel like my dog. Because when I had that dream, I felt the vibe of my dog and I didn't feel, feel it that much. Mm. Hold on, there's another, so I was working in Western Suffolk Boses. I was working in Wilson Tech at a time and um a kindergarten in dicks hills and for some reason when i'm they they assigned you i was a custodian they assigned you areas that i was in this the left lane area where it was just a small little spot where kindergarten um classrooms and a gymnasium big gymnasium and i saw like a lot of like shadow people like apparitions on the corner of my eyes and then i would just turn around and just it wouldn't be there at first that kind of freaked me out but when that shit kept happening especially there was a certain spot that i didn't like the place i didn't like the vibe of the place 
where I was cleaning at. So I kind of like do it as fast as I can just to get away from that spot. That spot particularly. Spending a, a year or two there and then seeing that, I kind of like, all right. So here is Ray talking about some of his experiences. I can tell you one event that did happen one time. This was a while back. I was helping out um, grandpa doing something and then I, I came home and we were downstairs doing something and we kept hearing at the time we had a we had a, a german shepherd crossbreed she was half german shepherd and half wolf her name was susie she was outside and for some reason or another she was standing by this tree that's located this okay here here's the real trick of it all who would tell you that the same spot that she was standing at was the same spot that we buried her at and that was the same spot she was standing at where she was just outside barking, barking, barking. And grandpa just came out and said, ah, oh, this fucking dog, what's it barking for? That? But the way she was barking, it was like you could tell whatever was there, she was the only one that could see it. Because she was like, like all her hair was up. She was, she was in that attack, like attack, but yet stepping back caution. She was like growling, her teeth were showing everything. I, I, I was seeing it through the window. And whatever it was, she was just like, you know how like when dogs pounce and they look low and they're looking at it, not releasing, whatever it was looking at, she was not releasing the eyes. It was like looking at it and she just backed up. But the way she was barking, it was like you would swear there was somebody standing there, but then there's nobody there. And like I said before, the weird part about it all, where she was barking at was she was standing, where she was standing at was exactly the same spot where we buried her at. Which that's what really kind of blew my mind about the whole situation. And, but the tree that's there, it used to be a tree. It's in between the, it's in between the gate of where the back of the house is. And like, it grows, but it doesn't grow as a tree. It grows like a bush. But whatever it was that she saw, it was standing right there. And she was just, like, I mean, she was like, rah, rah, like, like wanting to like literally like whatever, like if whatever it was, I knew it had to be supernatural. And mind you, I'll be honest with you, I'm not too much of a believer about the supernatural, but I would have to say that in our house, we have, you know, there's been certain like hiccups, things that happen, you know, that are really like, that really like kind of boggles the mind. Like I remember one time I had uh, I had left uh, Christopher and the family. They went, they were taking Christopher. At that time, Christopher was training in Wei Chung and he happened to leave the house with the family. So I waited for my wife to come, his mother. We got together. I locked the door in my house. We went, we did a little, we first did a little shopping for ourselves first and then we came back to pick up the boys because we were waiting for them to come from school. But when we came back, I noticed that the bottom lock was locked, but not the top lock. And I'm like, okay, you know, I said, okay, maybe it's a coincidence, whatever, whatever. I was like, but damn, I know I locked both locks when I left. So I'm like, all right, maybe I did it. So I forgot, so okay, whatever, whatever. Boys come home, the whole nine yards. They were walking up the stairs, the little stairs from the back. As we were walking out, my wife saw I locked both locks. And the whole nine yards. We came back no more than a half an hour later. We went down to Target. And we came back home. I was just about to put the key into the door. And the door just opened up. Both locks were unlocked. And here's the thing. Nobody was in the house. Because five minutes after us talking, I thought maybe it might have been somebody. No. Grandpa just... Just pulled into the driveway. And as soon as he pulled into the driveway, Chris was coming out. That was at the time when they bought you the bag mm. for the uh, for the for the Wei Chung and the whole nine yards. And we was like, You guys weren't in the house? And they were like, No, we just got here. And that was um my wife that, that asked, You guys, did you guys come back at any time? And she was like, No, we just got here. Grandma was the one that told her. And it was just like, I was like, I looked at her, she looked at me, I was like, okay, okay. And from that day forward, 
every door in my house, I stuck a piece of paper in between each door just to see maybe, you know, maybe I'm fucking going nuts or something, you know, maybe it was something. But no, on several occasions, each time that I would go to those rooms, that I would put the paper in between the doors, you would open the door just to check. Paper's not there. Paper's on the floor, but yet the door's closed. Then there was one incident that happened with Grandpa, which was very, 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 which kind of, I would have to say, shed, I think it may have shed a little light on the subject of probably because, you know, it was one time Grandpa was downstairs. He was having problems because Christopher could tell you, was, we, we would always have problems with that damn pump, remember? Every time one would go off. So finally we bought one and the damn thing didn't last no more than I think it was like two months. So he goes downstairs, he takes out the whole entire pump. He's pissed. I mean, he's pissed. I'm mean, pissed. Like, I'm hearing this man. And he, I mean, you know, like in Spanish, McDonald's, yeah, this fucking house. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Five minutes after him saying that, he slammed down the pump. And five minutes of him saying this fucking house, like I, I hate this fucking house, I'm tired of it. He was just pissed. No lie, five seconds after he said that, that he slammed that, the pump turned on and threw out all the fucking water that was still inside the pool. But here was the catch. The pump wasn't plugged up. So, I mean, if that's not, you know, I'll be honest, if that's not enough to tell you that there might be something, maybe, I, I know other people might say, oh, it might have been a little bit of power still trapped in the battery of the, of the thing. I'm like, no, because the only way that pump can activate, it has to be physically plugged. Not to mention it has a weight floater that has to be held straight up so that the switch can trip. But keep in mind, it wasn't plugged up and the floater, Grandpa took, disconnected it. Because you could disconnect it and replace it. He disconnected it just to see if it would work. And that's when he picked up the pump and he slammed it on the floor and he said what he said and the shit just turned on through water and shit everywhere. And, whew, forget about it. I mean, he had a few choice words after that as well. But, <laughs> you know, but hey, you know, uh, yeah, it, it was some, I'll be honest, it was some really creepy shit. Uh, this isn't necessarily paranormal, but Chris told me that about some kind of incident where there's somebody in your backyard. I wasn't there for that one. Chris was. Uh, I remember you said something about you saw some kind of shape or something. I think he's talking about that was the the first day that that's the one I confused you. I thought you were with Grandpa during that time. Oh, it was the first day we moved in. Oh yeah, that would yeah, be something that Chris yeah, like I said. It was, there the was first, it was the first day we moved in. I thought you were there. I thought it was you. It was either the first day that you, we moved in or the first day you guys moved in with us, but. Grandpa said he saw somebody in the backyard with a cage and he was trying to let it looked like he had an animal in the cage and he was trying to let it out. He had a long coat and he had like a like a hat that was he's hiding his face. The moment he was coming out the backyard, the guy just ran and dipped and it was the strangest shit ever. Like, that's the strangest thing I've ever heard wow. him complain about. Wow. I will. Like I said, I, I wasn't there for that one. I heard about it. You know what I'm saying? Because Chris told I remember he was, like, he was asking me about it. I was like, nah. I mean, the only time I ever... The only, the only three times that I know about situations that happened was the door, which it happened, which that to this day, it's... it's and I can't really say because even, even a couple of times, like... Remember, Grandma would complain who went in her room and come to find out her door was open. Remember a few times? Oh, yeah. And yeah. she, she, yeah, she would, she, 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 in the beginning, and she would blame. If she the kids playing in my room, blame everybody. And we're like, no, nobody. It got so bad that the woman put a lock. You remember, she put the lock on the yeah. door. And we would come back and her door would be open. This was before Victor. No, yeah. no, not even before. This is Victor was there, but he left. He yeah. wasn't even in the house. Exactly. Victor used to disappear mm. a lot and go to Queens, and it wasn't even him. It wasn't. It was At this time, he wasn't him. even. He was in Pennsylvania. Yeah. It wasn't even. Yeah. It was. He yeah. was like this time. He was like fully gone. Yeah. It was crazy. Like some of the stuff that. Oh, yeah, that, God, that one. That one. Yeah. I remember her. I remember her blaming even me, and I. I thought it was strange because she knows I don't. There's nothing interesting in her room. I like that's the last place I would ever go. I'm 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 a hermit, you know. I'm always in my room doing shit. Yeah, and like, and 
Also, I will have to say, like, you know, I mean, I know a lot of people say it might have been the house settling, but come on, you're hearing noises. Like, remember, the, like, remember those times when we would just hang out in your room? Or we were, or like, a couple of times we were in the den, and we were, like, when, because in the beginning when we first moved there, uh, me and my wife with, uh, with Christopher's two younger brothers, we were living in the den. And honestly speaking, we used to hear, like, it used to sound like somebody was walking up like if they were walking on the roof but we're like it's impossible because we're like in the den you know what i mean so like you know that's a singular roof because they used because the den was actually a garage it was converted into part of the house yeah and you know so there's so the roof up there is hollow because the pitch of where it's at so nobody could walk up there you know what i mean yeah so but it literally sounded like somebody was just walking around like all you hear was like somebody walking it was just like I mean, I don't know about now. <laughs> I'll be honest, I haven't been in the house in like what almost going on twenty plus I years. Tell you, I can tell you, like in my room, in my room, I would hear like steps. Like you, you, you know, everything is made out of wood. Yeah. I periodically would hear like, like the wood would have like a certain pressure, like as if somebody stepped in, stepping and walking on it. And then I'm like, you know, at this moment, it's like it comes. It's not all the time though. It's like. Right. It's like, I just find it weird that it, it started like a few months ago and, I'm, and and then I won't hear about it or maybe I won't care about it and just, it, maybe it happens a lot. I just don't give it, you know, I just don't notice it anymore. Like, Well, also keep in mind also too. Um, I have been part, noticing when i Yeah, I'm, this part of Brentwood also too has a history um, which dates back, like I'm talking about way, way back. Uh, at a time from here, from the college, going all the way down to where uh, Pine Park uh, Elementary is, that whole entire area used to be all Pilgrim State. Just for some context, for those of you not from Long Island, Pilgrim State is a psychiatric center that used to be a lot bigger, like it used to cover a lot more land, but now most of the buildings are abandoned or have been torn down. However, there are a few buildings that are still in operation. And, you know, honestly speaking, keep in mind, and I can vouch for this, that in the campus we have, there's tunnels that we have in certain areas of the college that actually leads. Well, right now they're sealed off, but if you break through, the, we got tunnels where they lead all the way from Pilgrim State to the college because a Captree Common used to be a medical ward before they turned it into a, before they turned it into a cafeteria area. Mm. That used to be the area where they used to like, if the people used to pass away or die in Pilgrim State, they used to bring them from Pilgrim say I could if there's that North day, Middle too. Yeah. North Middle Almost, was part of it too. Yeah, yeah, North Middle was part of that whole soccer field, mm -hmm. everything. It, it was that the North the, North the Middle going areas. all the way up towards the knife center. Mm -hmm. Going all the way up to where that whole area is back there where the, I forgot where that park is where they did the big bus for all the MS thirteen people. Yeah. That whole area going up towards the Phoenix house, that whole area all up to there. Mm hmm All that used to yeah, be Yeah, the Pilgrim audit, State. yeah. It used to be Pilgrim State. And they and there was like, you know, there was a there was a history. There was a history there. I could there was one thing that did happen one time which it freaked me the fuck out. It was during the last snowstorm we had. I was plowing and I was coming across Loop Road, which is Loop Road comes right behind. It's, Loop Road is right behind here because, you know, you can go in through here through there. That's mm. the Mother Caprini Field. So we have a big loop back there that it used, it used to be called, you know, we call it Loop Road because of the way it loops around. But one day I was plowing through there. Yo, no lie. I had to, I mean, granted, you know, they said it, it must have been like I slipped on ice or whatever it was. But when I was driving, I literally saw a shape. Once I'm coming around Loop Road, going up this way. Mm. Now, right over here is the nature trail. Okay. If you go in through here, you're still into the, you're still in the big field. When you go past there, there's a fence. That's the nature trail. A little further down by the workforce building is where we have the entrance to go onto the nature trail. 
Now I'm pulling up As I'm coming up I kid you not I saw a person run right Right like right in front Of where the truck was It came out of nowhere Like let's just say This is what you saw right there It just ran like that Ran across the truck and then disappeared How I know Because I fucked the truck up trying to stop I fucked up the plow and I fucking and I blew out uh, some of the bushes from the that held the plow truck that held the plow up. That fucking thing it ran and but here's the thing: I got out the truck, I looked, like you know, cause the way the way that shit went, I know I had to have hit it because it was like this is the truck, it just came out of nowhere and I and I stopped when I stopped, I went like this like this and the whole plow thing bent and fell forward. And when I looked, it was I didn't see nothing. What I saw was still the snow coming down. Were there any uh, footprints or anything? Even to be honest with you, even if there was, I really couldn't see because it was snowing so so repetitively that time that you we couldn't see shit. But I know for a fact that what I saw, it was a person. I couldn't see a face. I couldn't see features or anything. All I saw was like a black silhouette, but it was a person. It ran by. And the only thing I saw was when it came out of one thing, passed the front of the truck. And then when I turned to look that way, all I saw was when it, whatever it was, went through the bushes area. But I tell you right now, nothing moved. Nothing moved. I, mind you, I got out of the truck. Keep in mind, the truck got spotlights. I turned that sucker that way. I didn't see shit. I could, I could take you right now and show you exactly the same spot. And I could show you exactly where I did the damage on the curve of the sidewalk when I hit with the plow. And you could, and I could show you exactly where the spot was where the person ran through. It was whatever person, spirit, whatever the hell it was. But it ran in front of my truck, bro. I was like... I was, I'm not going front, man. I shot it that day, bro. I don't I, I, bro, that shit scared the fuck out of me. Because I thought I killed somebody. Mm -hmm. But then I come outside, I'm looking around. I don't see no footprints. I don't see nobody. I don't see nothing. All I know is my plow's bent. I hit the curve. And I know what the fuck I saw right in front of the truck. I wish Willie was here, man. Because... There was this one time that I had, remember Willie? Yeah. I had him, I <laughs> he, he was staying over my house, and then I tell him, listen, you know, this draw, this, this is when we had the Wii, and we had the Wii playing in the background, but it was turned off. I said, listen, my drawers, I swear to God, it opens or close. I, I know it sounds like the most, ah, yeah, okay, that's what everybody say, like, shit moves, and... And you know what the crazy thing is? It didn't took me that long to prove it. Because right after I said it, it was like on cue. It was like whatever it was was listening to me and decided, hey, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna move this to make him a believer. Right after. And that's and I re remember there was a, Willie did not want to go in my room. He he went to Alex. Yeah. Me and oh, him, yeah, yeah, yeah. I me remember and him went to that. Alex. Right. That's when. Um, that was the reason why. Grandma got mad. Like, yeah. oh, I. Why he just went to Alex all of a sudden? Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, yo, you. Know, I wanted man. to go we with had, him too. We had man, we had to deal with your grandmother for a bit. After yeah, that. she was pissed. I off. didn't tell her the reason why because wow. I'm like, there ain't nobody gonna believe yeah, me. Yeah, because she got she got mad because yeah, because uh, yeah, Willie. That was the time when Willie came to visit, right? Yeah. Oh my god, bro! <laughs> like I remember that because y'all would y'all would hang out at Alex's house. Yeah. You would come and hang out in the house like, over there. I'm like, yo, let me go over to Alex's house, and he's like, oh no, because if Willie, if he thinks his house is is better, then then he can stay there. You stay here. I'm like, you know, like little did she know, it's like I want to go because. That shit just happened, and I don't want to stay in my room either. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let me tell you, bro. Like, I was, uh, you, you know, the truth is, is that, you know, like, Long Island has a rich history of unexplained things that happened out here. And then let's keep in mind also, too, you know what I mean? Like, the mobsters that lived out here, there's countless bodies that are, I mean, you know, that, that have been buried that's up there in Yampank Landfill that, you know, yeah. that people haven't found, you know what I mean? Because it's... Remember... Before all this was here, there was something else here. So, who's to say if 
God forbid, we don't even know. There might be some of these houses might be might have been built on top of cemeteries mm -hmm. that we don't know about. You know what I mean? Because I mean, come on. You know what I mean? Like, who would tell you? Look how look. We're literally what four blocks away. There's a cemetery right there. Yeah. And you see how small that cemetery yep. is. But is that cemetery really that small? My boy Frankie's house. I'll tell you straight up. I've heard I've heard knocking on the door. Nobody there. I've heard sometimes we're downstairs joking around, messing with the dogs, and we will hear someone like walking upstairs like they're in the house. Because Frankie's house before Frankie's grandma gra Frankie's grandmother, his family, there's about like almost six generations of his family that lived in that house. Mm. This house is that house has only have gotten maybe one facelift. But other than that, the house is technically traditional. Everything that's in it, it's the all original. And, you know, um, his grandfather died in the house, you know, Hopskins. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm like I said, I wasn't a full believer before, but I could be honest with you, man. Like, you know, I'm, I, I, I can honestly say I feel that, the you know, the dead does walk among us. You know, it's just... We can't see it, but we can feel their presence. Cause like you ever been in a in a spot and all of a sudden you get like a cold chill and like all your hair stand up. Oh yeah. Like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you're like, damn, I wasn't feeling like that a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it gets like really cold. Chances are something might have walked through your room and you don't even know. Mm -hmm.